All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. Uh, uh, I guess this has kind of been somewhat overwhelming. We didn't think that we were going to have all of these different changes. Um, I think even last week we were mentioning how warm it was over in the in the fellowship hall and uh, the children's church area. We decided to bring a fan. Well, we found out that the um, the air conditioner compressor inside of the unit uh, exploded. So there's no air over there. Um, thank be to God, that's a brand new unit. So it is under uh, the parts or under um, warranty. But we had it installed on July 12th, 2022. The parts are under warranty. The the labor is not. So uh, we're going to have to get that, uh, you know, everything costs. But, you know, we take the good with the bad. God has supplied. We are never afraid of the need. And that's something that we learned just a couple of months ago. God uh, told us in the matter of a message, the necessity of the need. If God promises to meet all of your needs, then what you all have to do is increase your level of faith to meet your needs. What does that mean? Uh, if I have a $1,000 mortgage, God is obligated to meet that need. If I have a $10,000 mortgage, God is obligated to meet the need. So I'm not afraid of the need. We just have to increase our faith for what we need. So I don't have a problem getting another $2 million building then because uh, if that's what God tells us to do, I know he's going to meet the need. All right. So um, that being said, I th thank God that we always have options in plan Bs. Yep, we're growing. It's hard to find a seat. I love that. Hey, amen. Uh, uh, I, I want to make sure that we do have enough uh this is a uh, th this is a great problem to have uh, that we are are looking for more space and at some point in time we're probably going to outgrow the children's church for Bible study so we know that we do have options which is a, a great thing um, so I'm, I'm just appreciative to God that we are growing we are seeing that growth I hope you all are enjoying your meals, and that there is enough food to go around. We normally cook for the amount of people that we usually have. Today, we have an unusually uh, large uh, amount of people, uh, which is a blessing, but we're running and we're, we're, we're trying to get more food so that we make sure that everybody gets something to eat. Um, Y'all know what normally happens, though, right? Next week, we're going we, we gonna to cook enough for 80 people and, and 20 folks going to show up, and then I'm going to be mad. So y'all make sure y'all come back next week. You hear? All right. Um, we have, do we have any announcements, any announcements, any announcements that we need to, to get out? Uh, remember that on August the 6th, the, the first Sunday in August, we are going to be um, – we are going to be with the city of Ferguson in our ninth annual Unity Day. So you all remember, everybody knows what happened in the city of Ferguson. In August of 2014, Mike Brown was killed by a police officer. And uh, because of that, the city had been in turmoil. So we were always looking for how can we uh, bring the community back together. There has been a major change in all of Ferguson. Uh, we went from a predominantly, uh, well, we always had for as long as Ferguson has been in existence, there's been a white mayor and a white male. This is the first time that we've had a black person and a female at that. Uh, and we're grateful that God has allowed us to find favor with Mayor Jones. Uh, she has become a, a great supporter of Jerusalem, and we have done our best to also support her, not in policies, but in practices. Uh, I'm, I'm not interested in whether or not she runs as Democrat or Republican. I believe her to be a woman of God, a woman of faith, and a woman of integrity. 
that is important. That is most important. I don't care what platform you run under. Uh, if you subscribe to the word of God and you push God's agenda, I push you. Amen. So, uh, um, but with that being said, there's been so many changes. Uh, we have a black mayor. We have a black police chief. We have more black police officers on the force in Ferguson than we have non-black police officers. Um, a, a lot of our city council, uh, our St. Louis County prosecutor came from Ferguson City Council. And right now he is currently running against, um, what is the gentleman's name? Bob? Hope, not Bob Hope. Uh, <laughs> Josh, is it Ho Josh Holly? Uh, St. Louis prosecutor Wesley Bell is currently running against Josh Holly because of the situation that we had January six and and the the rhetoric, the hate rhetoric that had been spilled out with those insurrectionists, this, that, and the other. This is not a political view. Uh, again, what we do is we try to support the right, not the right wing, not right wing, what is right, what is righteous. Uh, and, and brothers and sisters, don't get mixed up in politics because there are some great things uh, as far as social justice that the Democrats are for, but then there are some other things that the Democrats push that is totally anti-Bible. There are a, a lot of Christian views that the conservative uh, right-wing Republican Party push, but then when it comes to social justice and equality and, and, and financial stability and, and sharing the wealth, they are horrible at it. So uh, I, I wish that the Christians would come together. If we were really one church, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, if, if we were that this would be a whole lot better country. The country is said to be a, is, is there somebody coming behind you? I guess there is. Uh, the country is said to be a Christian nation. Out of all the religions in the United States, Christianity supposedly outweighs number-wise the, uh, the other community. Don't worry about that. Baby. Just, go ahead. Keep going. Right. Just make sure I get it back before the end of the night. Don't go home with that. All right. Uh, but if we were really one Lord, one faith, one baptism, then it wouldn't be Baptist, Pentecostal, Church of God in Christ, Church of God, Apostolic. It would be the church. And if the church went to Capitol Hill, we could get whatever we wanted because we, were, we show up in numbers. And your numbers is your vote. Church folks, the, the church, God's people, we need to stand up and say we're not going to take this any longer. But unfortunately, we got 40 different Baptist denominations and they all fighting each other. And while we're fighting each other in the church, Satan is running rampant. So, um, dare I say any more? No. No. All right. We have been talking about, and uh, what time is it? We have right at about an hour and 10 minutes or so um, to, to go back into this, this idea and this lesson that we've been talking about. We just started on last week on the psychology of God. The psychology, psychology is, don't start with me. Um, <laughs> Y'all already starting to laugh at me. You're going to hurt my feelings and make me cry. Psychology is what you think are the behavior of your thoughts. When we talk about the psychology of God, we are asking, how does God think? How does God think towards us, and how are we to respond? When we started diving into how does God think, God thinks how he acts. You all understand that. You think how you act. So as a man thinketh and believeth in his heart, so is he. We said that Shakespeare says, I think, therefore I am. So what I do, I can show you what I'm thinking about what I'm doing. If I look at you and stick out my tongue, you know I got a problem with you. If I look at you and roll my eyes, you, you know I got a problem with you. If I look at you and I smile, then you know I'm, I'm, I'm either happy or I'm faking it with you. But you can pretty much tell what I'm thinking by how I act. 
Now, how does God act? Some people don't even know how God acts. Some people don't know that God is a jealous God. We, we know the God of grace. We know the God of mercy. But many of us don't know the other side of God. God is jealous. God is angry. When they talk about God being a horrible or a terrible God, uh, what they're saying is that you don't want to fool with him. But many people, when they hear those words, when, when the Bible talks about God being a terrible God, and, and uh, we look at the word terrible that he's bad, and that's not what they're saying. They're saying if, if you understand the word terror, God has terrorized some people. Uh, especially those who have come against his children. He said, it is better that a millstone be tied about your neck and you thrown into the sea than for you to offend God's least one. If you offend God's least one, God said, I'm coming after you. And, and, and there won't be anything to stop me from grabbing you. you. You all understand what I'm saying? So that terrible in terror, but many people don't know that side of God. And it's because we don't know that side of God that... Um, most of us are comfortable in sin. <clears throat> when, when God told, um, as, as David to Solomon was, was bringing and moving the, um, the, the covenant, and he said, nobody can touch the ark of the covenant. One guy, they, they, they had it on, uh, they had four people carrying the Ark of the Covenant. One guy lost his footing and the Ark began to shift as if it was going to fall. A man reached out to grab it to keep it from falling and God killed him. He said, I said, don't touch it. Well, I'm pretty sure if the guy made it to heaven, you know, he probably said, man, what's up? Really? I was just trying to help. He said, I ain't asked for your help. Most folks don't understand that God. That's not the God we are used to hearing about. But God says, I don't change. There are things now that I allow. There are things that God is tolerating from us that um, he says, I'm long suffering, but long is not infinite. Long is finite. That means there is an end to long. And one day God is going to say, I'm sick of what y'all doing. <laughs> y'all keep playing church. You know, parents who holler down to their kids, don't make me come down there. Y'all familiar with that? God has been saying the same thing through his word. Don't make me come down there. If you read Revelations, that's Revelations. If you read Ephesians, Corinthians, well, no, actually Revelations is after I done came down and I'm cleaning up. But there are warnings from Genesis all the way up to Jude. Don't make me come down there. But this is what we're happening, and this is where we are. And why is it important? Why do you think it is important to know the mind of God? So that we will know how God wants us to live, how God wants us to walk and talk. Uh, God says, to be holy because I am holy. Anybody else? Huh? We need a mic? Oh. Yeah, understood. Go to um, go to Hebrews. Let, let me, if I can. Um, Lord, help me. What what do I want to bring first? Um, go to Hebrews chapter eleven. Hebrews chapter eleven, verse sixteen. Very familiar. Most of us have. Uh, if you have been in church any amount of time, you, you, you've heard this. Let's 
Was it, uh, or was it six? Verse six, I'm sorry, not 16. Hebrews 11, verse six. Let me on, let me know when you have it. We got it? All right. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For him or for he that cometh to God must believe that he is or that he exists and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If it is our if it is our idea, if it is our goal to please God, you cannot please God without having faith in him. You, uh, the way to please him is through faith. Faith comes by hearing. Well, let's let's go there. Um, Romans chapter ten. So we just we just read that without faith it's impossible to please God, right? Thank you, dear. I'm trying to see where do we want to um, faith, faith, faith. Do we want to start? Verse 8, Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between Jew or Greek, the same Lord over all. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear it without the preacher? And then uh, it goes on to say, so faith comes by hearing. So the more you hear, the more you hear about God, the more you hear of God, the more you you read the scriptures and learn about who God is and what God is doing and how God is operating, the more you get to know who he is. You cannot come to him unless you know him because it just says those who come to him must first believe that he exists and that he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So let us try to find out uh who God is, and if the Bible tells us, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, and God, or Christ said that me and my Father are one, all that I do, I do because he told me to do. We understand that uh, if we want to have the mind of God, we have to have the mind of Christ, and then to have the mind of Christ, if he says, let this mind be in you, but we we talked on last week in Isaiah when Isaiah said, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. They are as far as the heavens are from the earth. Can we still get a glimpse of who God is and how he operates, even though we may not completely understand it? I don't know if we mentioned this. Did we? I think we had, we, we had talked about, and I don't know if we did or not, so uh, forgive me if, if it's repetitive. An individual said a couple of weeks ago, 
I came to church, but I had a a a, a family brunch scheduled, and I, I left church early to go to the family brunch. But I don't think God minded that. He 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 was cool with that because he he wants us to love our family. How many people don't understand how God really thinks? And if God has said, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, it should be consecrated. It should be set apart. Why are you deciding to, to put, and I'm not saying you can't have a Sunday brunch, but if, if our order of service and you have been a member of Jerusalem for two, three, four, five years and you know that our services always start at 9 and 11, 11, 15-ish, we're, we're about out, then schedule your brunch for 11, 45, 12 o'clock. Don't schedule your brunch for 10, 15 and say, well, God, cool with that. That means you don't really understand how he's thinking. If God says, I'm jealous and I don't want anything to come in between my time, then once again, and we're talking about people who've been in church for 30, 40, 50 years, but still don't know no better or just refuse to learn. Don't know which one it is, but you all understand what I'm saying? More often than not, I will have somebody who will say, uh, well, Pastor, my, uh, I couldn't pay tithes this month because my, my, uh, my rent was coming due or my light bill, my gas bill, my whatever. And folks really think that I'm tripping on them about some money. And I'm saying, you don't understand, tithes is not a matter of your money. Tithes is not about money. It's about faith. It's about love. Do you love God? Where your, heart's, where your heart is, there will your treasures be. Do you have enough faith to believe that God is going to be your provider? Do you think that according to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else is going to be added. Can you trust God to be what he says he's going to be? That's why the Bible says, if you come to him, you must believe that he is and that he rewards them who seek him. You don't understand. You can't say that God is. You cannot say that God is, but you don't fear him. Then you don't believe that he is. You might believe, you know, when I say God, I'm saying the God I was just telling you about that was terrible. The, 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 the God who, who uh, you shouldn't play with, the God of wrath, uh, that God, you, you, you don't want to play with him. But if you think that, you know, he's just the man upstairs, he's just the big guy in the sky, uh, no, that, that, that sounds more like Bruce Almighty, you know, and you probably don't fear Bruce or, or Evan or, or whoever, but Jehovah? No, dare I say Yahweh? You, you, you don't want to fool with him. But if you don't know him to know that he's that kind of guy, that's why I think it's important for us to, to continue to learn who he is. Now, last week we talked and we said that there are so, <clears throat> you can get a great revelation by how they act. When God acted a certain way, they gave him a name for the act. Does that make sense? You all understand what I'm saying? So uh, when God provided for the children of Israel in the desert, they gave him the name Jehovah Jireh, the provider. When they, when they were uh, having a hard time and they needed peace and God showed up, he was Jehovah Shalom. When, uh, when they were going into battle, he became Jehovah Nisi. God the banner. Uh, he, his names says how he acts. Does that make sense? Y'all following me? Boy, y'all y'all done ate too much. Yeah, boy, I'm looking at y'all eyes. They red. I, I, I know when you blinking long and when you sleeping, there's a difference. And y'all doing both. Do we need some coffee? Maybe we need to put on a pot of coffee, too. I'm going to start hollering and screaming. The Lord! <laughs> I can't help it. All right. I'm sorry. Not really. Um, 
So God's names is how he acts. Understanding who they are. God is plural. God's plurality was given to us. The, the first sign of his plurality was when he said, let us make man. That is in Genesis. But uh, let us, the, the plurality, E-L-O-H-I-M, L-O-M. That is the plurality. That is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now, as we start going through and we were talking about all of the different names and what they are references to and, and how, uh, how they show up, I want to, um, hmm. I want to know from you all, if, if, if y'all will be so, so kind and daring to talk back. When you envision God, how do you, what are your thoughts towards him? And, and, and I'm not asking you to be extra um, holy, you know, be real. Tell me what you really think. When, uh, well, I'm not even saying describe him. I'm saying when you think of God, do you think of, right, do you think of Superman? Do you think of, um, anybody remember the movie from way back when, Oh God, with, uh, was it George Burns? Was that his name? Uh, little, little, little bitty short, big-eared dude. You know, he, he played Oh God, and then they made a sequel, Oh God, You Devil. Um, but, you know, yeah, do, do do you think of Morgan Freeman when you think of God? When what do you think? Do you think of a character who looks like Zeus or Hercules? What do you see in your mind and is that someone that you fear? Do what how many of us really and and don't don't please don't just answer how you how you think I'm looking for an answer. But how many of us uh, or do you fear God? Like scared, I want to say scared to death, scared to death, scared to life, scared, you know. How many of us are, 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 are actually afraid or, or, or fear? Mother, you good? You, you all right? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> How many of us actually fear, you know, a real fear, fear God? I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking for hands or, uh, yeah, yeah, show me. If, when I said, I can tell you what you believe based on how you act, right? When, when I was much younger, and even still today to, to some degree, if I was doing something that I knew I didn't have no business doing and my parents came home or my parents, you know, if I heard them coming down the steps towards my domain, I turned... NWA down. I, I, uh, I, I cleaned, you know, I started picking up stuff around my room. I made sure my room was clean and, and, and whatever else because I feared what they were going to say if they heard the music that I was listening to, if they saw my room was dirty, if whatever. If you fear God and, and when I said those who come to him must believe that he is. He is what? He is God. If he is God, he is uh, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. That means God is all-powerful, all-knowing, and, and always present. If you really feared God and believed that he was the God that he said that he is, which is everywhere, all the time, all-powerful, 
how do we sin the way that we do? And I'm not saying, you know, there are some sins where people say, you know, you, you sin underwear. <coughs> I'm not a big fan of the people who always talk about, you know, sinning unaware. I don't really think that if you are saved that you can sin and not know it. I understand if I said, you know, my daughter said, hey, daddy, where's mom? Mom went to Walmart. She's at Walmart. Well, mama changed her mind, decided to go to Target. She's actually at Target, not Walmart. I ain't talking about that. You know, that's, to me, I, I, I hope that God wouldn't count me for saying that. I'm talking about, well, you know, I, I slipped and cussed, and I didn't realize it, so that's not a big deal. You know, I don't think you can sin and not know it. The Holy Spirit, your conscience will will warn you most often right before you get ready to do something that you know you ain't got no business the holy spirit say mm -mm -mm -mm. don't do mm -mm. You, you get that that knot in your stomach or that hmm oh yeah absolutely yes ma'am think sometimes we, we that's better is it better oh if y'all say so not really okay you go ahead <laughs> i think sometimes we we uh take for granted that he is present we we take him like he's not there so it makes it easier for us to do the things that we're doing that's wrong <laughs> because if we had that that concept of he's right at your back or your side and you had that conscience all the time it, you would think twice before doing anything wrong. You all remember, it's been, the, well, for those who have been with us for a year or greater, and I forgot what we were talking about, but I had mentioned, um, what if we did a, a major, you know, life-size cutout of an individual, and that individual represented God? And everywhere you went, that life-size uh, cutout went with you everywhere. So every time you turn around, there it is. If you say you really believe that God is, like Lady Adam said, always present, always around, if every time you turned around there was this statue standing right next to you, how many of us would continue to do some of the things that we do knowing that the representation, if you will, of God it used to be we cared what the preacher thought. If you went, if, if you was a preacher and you went over to somebody's house and 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 they were were doing anything, even drinking, and and you all know my stance. I'm I'm not the one who says drinking is a sin. I'm not the one who says smoking is a sin. Uh, but back in the day, if you were drinking or smoking, that was considered bad. And when the preacher came around. They, they would try to hide it, you know, because there was a reverence. You represented God in the building. Now, you come in and they offer the preacher something to drink. There is no, the reverence that we used to have of God is no longer. Yes, ma'am. Pastor, I also think that we take God for granted. We think because we take the scripture and try to put a twist to it because he's merciful, because he's kind. He knows we, that we're weak. We use those things to do what we want to do, and then we want to fall on the mercy of God. Not that we're really falling on his mercy, but what we're saying, well, Lord, you know I'm, I'm weak. You, 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 know her. I'm, you know I was going to do it anyway. So we say, you know, like, like, like when children used to get a whipping, they say, oh, mom done told me don't do that, but she didn't whip me this time. And she didn't whoop me the second time. But she told you, I'm going to get you, boy. I'm going to get you, girl. I told you, don't do that. <laughs> God told us what not to do. And because he's merciful, because he's the God of another chance, we just continue to do what we want to do because God hadn't done anything at that time. Not realizing that God is long-suffering, giving us the opportunity to say, you know what? Let me stop this playing around. Let me stop this foolishness. Because I know that my chastisement is coming. 
brothers and sisters, if, if God was labor ready, you all familiar with labor ready? Some, some, some young folks don't understand or, or, or wouldn't really around to know, uh, shut up, uh, to know what labor ready was. Anybody, show of hands, who, who knows about labor ready? So, and, and I don't know if y'all from St. Louis or not uh, originally. Labor Ready is a place that you would go to and you, they, they opened up. It was like the unemployment office for a day's pay. So you would go to this place at 8 in the morning. They would open up and they would have a list of temp jobs for that day. You would go and whatever that job was that you wanted to do for that day, you would pull it and... Uh, you know, they would say, okay, you can go and do that job. And this job is uh, 10 hours, and it pays $10 an hour. And at the end of the day, you get your check that day. So you work today, you get paid today. That was labor ready. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. If God paid you daily based on your sin, you know, Every time you sin, you got a nosebleed. Every time you sin, one of your fingers fell off. There would be a lot less sin in the world. If, if, if everybody who killed somebody went to prison and they said, okay, um, can we prove that you killed them? You, you did kill them. We have undeniable proof. Okay, death row. That's tomorrow. You ain't going to be on death row for 25, 30 years. Uh, death row is really death row. We, we, we finna clear out the prisons. There'd be a lot less murders if, if an eye for an eye. You kill somebody? We, we're not going to wait five years for the, the, the trial you are entitled to a speedy trial. We're going to make sure you get one. And here's the video of you committing the act. Guilty, death row. Like, tell your family by now, because tomorrow, this time, you won't be here. You all understand? If God was that kind of God, God did not play. If there was more of Lot's wives being turned into salt, the Bible says, for, for, for those, my Jesus, an individual who takes hold of the gospel plow, turns around and looks back, is not fit. Woe unto him. Do you know how many preachers I know who not only are they no longer preaching, they don't even go to church. There's no fear. This is my life. I do what I want to. How many people that you know talk about is their life? How many of you all think that it's your life? You know, hey, this is my life. I do what I want, right? Well, not if you're a Christian. The Bible says if you are a Christian, you are bought with a price. It says point blank, you are no longer your own. So what if we take the mindset of God as slave master? You all understand? Maybe you, you need to see it. You need to see it from, uh, let's see. You are no longer your own. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Again, I always, I, I do my best to make sure that I don't give you my opinion, that I give you strictly what the Word of God says so that you can see it for yourself. Many people don't like when I say things like, okay, God is a slave owner or slave master. We have the connotation, you know, especially as black people, African Americans, uh, colored folks, um, and and. I was listening to some of the other people on the radio, and they said, 
uh, one of the senators or lawmakers used the word colored, and he, he was very conscious afterwards, but he said he didn't mean it in an offensive way. And all black people don't like it when white people call us colored, but our number one association in America that we look to to make sure that we are being treated right as the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. If we had a problem with the word color, then that particular group that we look to, that we aspire to, should change their name if the word colored is such a bad idea. I'm just saying. I threw that in for free, y'all. Don't get mad at me. I, I, I ain't saying I'm against the NAACP. Don't be tripping. I don't know why y'all looking like that. All right. Um, ooh, I ain't going to even read that part. I ain't going to read verse 16. Uh, let's go down to verse 19. Don't y'all read verse 16 because I don't want y'all to get mad at yourselves. Uh, verse 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Now listen to the, the, the definition of slavery. For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are your, your body and your spirit, which are God's. So there is no your body. There is no your spirit. That's God's. He owns that. He says, I bought it. I bought it with the price of blood. There was a blood offering. There was a sacrifice. There was ransom. There was a life given for a life. You're a slave. Huh, huh. Let's look at God now. We, we want to know the mind of God. Let, let me just take you down this proverbial track. Y'all mind? Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, we ever watch The Roots? Anybody ever watch the, the, the Roots movie, series, Kuta Kente, and, and all of that? Uh, there was no union for slaves. Anybody in here ever worked for a union or, or unionized workers uh, where you're a bargaining unit employee and then they, they go to management on your behalf. They make sure that you all get a particular wage. You, you know, uh, slaves didn't have a union, so th there weren't sick days for you. There weren't vacation days. Uh, whatever Massa said is what happened, right? We're aware of that. So if you understand that definition of slavery and you say, and according to the word of God, you were bought with the price. We are the, the, the servants. Now, yes, please follow me. Follow me, follow me, follow me. We are the children of God. <clears throat> As the children of God, then the Bible says that you are no longer servants, but you are friends. And then from friends to family, you are the child of God when you have accepted Christ. But you accept Christ through the servitude of his sacrifice. So understand that even though you are the child of God, you are still the servant or the slave, if you will. If you all, can, can, can y'all connect the dots here? Okay. When God says something, this is not a suggestion. You all understand? The word of God, God doesn't suggest things to us. He commands us, and then he expects us to follow the commands, and if you don't follow the commands, there's going to be consequences. So let's go to Psalms. Yes, ma'am. You, you got something to say? So did, God so did God orchestrate slavery? I mean, like the slavery that happened in real life. Did he have no. a part in that? No. Okay, but I thought that because of a disobedience. God allowed the children of Israel to go into slavery because of their disobedience and because of what happened. And there is a correlation between the children of Israel. And if you listen to what the black Hebrew Israelites are teaching, some of what they are teaching is not wrong. And, and, and that's what makes them dangerous. Because... 
when you take a little truth and a little lie, it becomes a whole lie. But there are some things that they are teaching that are absolutely factual. And if you connect the dots and go all the way back and God said that he would allow the, the, the children of Israel to be taken from their homeland, go to a place, they will be in bondage. And you look at the term of the 400 years of slavery that they went through in Egypt and how many times they went into captivity. And then the 400 years of, of bondage that was prophesied. And you look at when black people were taken from Africa, brought to the United United States, 1619, all the way up until, and, and to tell you the truth, we're still not out of slavery. We just cost more. I, 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 I love the interview that Mr. T had, and they asked him, they said, why do you wear all of those gold chains? He said, because I'm a slave. She said, excuse me? You're in America. You're, you're a, a celebrity. You're a movie star. He said, uh, I'm still a slave. I just cost more. Many of us are, are, are still in bondage. You don't want to have the man's name tattooed on your back, but the first thing you do is you go and you get Nike and you put them on your feet or on your back so that you can have somebody's name back on you. And you feel worthless if, if you know, we don't want pro wings from uh, Payless. We got to have names because the names make us feel better. And if I have somebody's name, I'm just saying... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Charge it to my head and not my heart. So Psalms. In the book of Psalms, the, 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 last, the last few numbers of Psalms goes into uh, praise, 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 praise. If you look at the 146th number of Psalms, Go to Psalms 146, and, and just understand I'm taking you here, and then we're moving very quickly. Psalms 146 starts with, praise ye the Lord, praise the Lord. Psalms 147, praise ye the Lord. Psalms 148, praise ye the Lord. Psalms, now you got to keep reading through there to see what all of the praises. Psalms 149, praise ye the Lord. Psalms 150, praise ye the Lord. It, all of these, the last five numbers of Psalms, all is praise ye the Lord. And we come into church and I say, praise ye the Lord. And you say, well, we ain't got no drums. I say, praise the Lord, but we, we ain't got no organ. But he said, praise him with your voice. Let everything that have breath, if you can do, uh, that's you. So when the master said, Negro, and y'all know he didn't say Negro. Hop on one leg. You didn't say, but I got arthritis. My knee hurt. Master, don't you remember you hit me in my knee yesterday, so I can't do it today. There was never any conversation. When Master said, do something, you just did it. But you come to church and you think, I have a choice. But God gave the command. Praise me. Praise me. And, and <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, Lars. He said, make a joyful noise. I said, hallelujah. You know, God ain't playing with us. So if he said, praise me. Praise me loudly. Hallelujah. Okay, next person. You. Praise him. That's another dead one. <laughs> you. Praise him. All right, you, 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 you got it. See, if... If God start killing us based on what we did to understand how he is, but God says, I'm giving you grace. And, and we have gotten so accustomed to the God of grace and the God of mercy, the, the, the God of loving kindness, that, oh, God is, is loving us and kind. See, if, if, if God was Ike Turner... 
Uh, oh, see, y'all, y'all know where I'm going now. Tina? And she said, oh, I was waiting when, 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 when real Ike was finna come back. See, the real God ain't, ain't came back yet. We've gotten accustomed to over the last 100, 200, 300 years that, 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 that God is, is good. When we were out in the fields and, and, and we were field Negroes and we was chopping the cotton and, and, and all of that and we were singing praises to the Lord in the cotton field. Now we come in the air conditioner building and sit there like we too cute. Do you not know that your body is not your own? Remember the Lord your God because it's he who have given you the power to get wealth. How many of you all will honor God with your giving because you know that your giving ain't your giving, it's his giving anyway. When you holler, I'm not finna give him my money. First of all, ain't no such thing as my money. Shut up. My kids tell me all the time, I say, y'all wasting my money. They say, Dad, you ain't got no money. That's the Lord's money. I said, y'all don't play with me. I don't have a car. I don't have. How, how many of us have talked about my clothes? You know, these are my clothes. This is my house. This is my car. These are my beach. This is my hat. This is my. Go to Psalms 24. See, I'm, I'm, I'm tr how can you know God but don't know his word? Everybody knows 23, the Lord is my shepherd, but you don't know Psalms 24? One, I mean, just one more over? Let me know when you get to Psalms 24. We're there. I love them church words. Them church words is amen. Uh, you know, I'd be like, yeah, I got you. Right on. Word. <laughs> Psalms 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Now, um, I'm, I'm, this is the amplified version. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it, the world and and they who dwell in it. Now, if, if there was um, my, my version, if, if I was to write a Bible and, and be able to have my version, it would say, the earth is the Lord's, and everything in the earth is the Lord's, and all of the people who live on the earth is the Lord's. So, you is the Lord's. So, the there is no such thing as me, my, and mine because everything belongs to God. So there is no such thing as my money. God has allowed you to be a manager over his resources. I tell people, I, I love my children, but they are not my children. This is who God has given me to, to manage and my job is to do like Eli did to Samuel. I want to make sure that I raise my children in a way that God has total access to them and he can talk to them. I'm raising them so that they can hear the voice of God. Daddy, what do you want me to be when I grow up? Whatever God wants you to be because I don't make that decision. So many people have went into jobs and careers based on what their parents told them. Now, man, trust me, I have looked up, uh, this is what the most highest paying jobs are right now. And by the time you would get to a place of graduating high school or if you decided to go to college, by the time you would graduate college, this is what the market is saying will be in high demand at that time. Do you know right now that there are a lot of places uh, doctors are being let go left and right because of health care and HMOs and, and all of that? When, when they started changing the rules to medicine, a lot of doctors wouldn't get paid. So now they done went to school for eight years, PhDs, and they ain't got no job. 
But somebody told their child become a doctor because they make good money. Instead of, instead of saying, Lord, what would you have for me? What do you want me to be? I told my kids, if God says I want you to be a burger flipper, flip burgers. And do it well. I mean, do it with, the Bible says, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Do it with the spirit of excellence. And I guarantee you that you will be fulfilled if that's what God's purpose is for you. God will have you fulfilled. You will be the happiest burger flipper ever. Go to 1 Corinthians. I'm, 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 I'm kind of moving around tonight because I'm, I'm, I'm feeling some kind of way. There, there are things that are happening, and, and I see stuff that's going on inside the church. And, and you all, there are times. Have you ever questioned your purpose? Ha, has anybody ever asked God, Lord, why am I really here? And, and, and if you are doing what God told you to do, do you know that there are times when it looks like I'm doing the wrong thing, that this, this must not be what, what, what God told me to do? There are times when, when, when I come to this building and you all, I, I just get depressed. Lord, I don't want to deal with these folks. These people getting on my last nerve. They, 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 they don't care nothing about me. I'm, I'm tired of folks lying to me. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I want to be as real as real can be. I, 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 I don't want to, 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 to fake in front of you. To me, there's been too much fake in the church. You know, people come to the church and, and um, you know, you, you would ask somebody, Good morning. How you doing? Oh, hey, blessed and highly favored. Wait, hey, dog, I just said good morning. You know, a good morning would suffice. You know, hello. How are you? Glad to see you. I'm okay with that. You, I, I, I don't, you know, when you ask somebody, you ever notice when you ask somebody how you're doing, the first thing they say is fine. How are you? Do you know most people who answer that ain't fine? But the correct answer is, fine, how are you? But in reality, I also know you really don't care. Because if I was to stop and say, well, since you asked, um, when I got to church today, there was uh, water running all over the place. I found out that the air conditioner was blown up. I'm sitting over there hot. I was, and they was like, um, um, actually, I, I got somewhere to go. Well, then why you ask me? Don't ask me if you really don't want to hear, but that's customary. Many of us are doing things in the church because it's just been the, the right thing to do. We come to church on Sunday not because we are looking for something from God or we're looking to give something to God. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, but come and provoke one another to love. I, I'm supposed to be here. Hey, hey I love you. <laughs> love you. I don't like you. But I love you. Because how many of y'all know we don't like everybody? Ain't, ain't no use of lying and say I like everybody. I, I don't like most people. People get on my nerves. I'm bothered by folks. I have a short fuse. I have road rage. God, God has delivered me from speaking cuss words. But the devil haven't forgot how to bring them to my mind. So I have to cast down every imaginary thought when people come and they run in front of me, when people get to a green light and hit the brakes and then the light ain't even yellow. Satan brings them words to my mind and I have to cast them down. When, when, when people say things to me that can be threatening to my family, I have to remember that the, the thug died yesterday, just, just a couple of days ago. <laughs> it ain't been that long ago. But I got to remember that I'm no longer him. That greater is he that lives in me. I have to deny myself and pick up my cross. 
I have to do all of these things. I have to remember that, you know, when, when, when I see a woman with a 36, 24, 36, and her name ain't Ronica, I need to turn my head and don't keep turning it back. I have to flee youthful lust. These are things that I have to do. And in the church, we're acting like, well, as soon as you get saved, you're a new creature. Old things have passed away. You no longer have that desire. I don't desire to sleep with anybody who's not my wife. Liar. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody ain't got the same problems and the same battles and all of that. But it, almost everywhere in the scripture, the problem with a man has been a woman. And vice versa. There is some sin that you're dealing with, some sin, whatever it is. But we try to pretend like sin don't bother us no more. And, and when I was in the world, it wasn't fun. I hated it. I, I hated it the whole time. Y'all, I, I had a lot of fun when I was sinning. I looked forward to it every weekend, every night, every day. My body, because nothing good from come from the flesh. This body is made from sin. That's why this body cannot go into heaven. Because heaven won't tolerate this. So this body has to lay down so my spirit, the one that says God owns, can go back to where it came from. But if we keep telling people in the church, when you become saved, then you become a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have come new. And a new saint says, they wake up the next morning, they said, my hands look new and my feet did too. Hey Amen. I got the same calluses. And I got them same bunions and knots on my toes. I thought they was going to be pretty now. It says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. I've been telling people about the Lord all the time, and if I don't go and get my feet done, they still look crusty. Well, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not a new creature, so maybe I'm not saved. They don't understand that the person who even wrote that said, I'm dealing with sin every day, all day. And every time I wish to do good, evil is always present. Inside of me, there is a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. I'm caught. My nephew said, I'm, Uncle, you don't understand. I'm caught between a push and a pull. Many of us don't realize where we are in here. And in here. Because how many of you all know your salvation and your willingness and wanting to do right by God is a matter of your heart. I still have a problem with God when he says, David is a man after my own heart. I'm like, you, you meant Abraham? Maybe you meant Abraham. Maybe Abraham was a man after your heart, or uh, maybe Hosea. Maybe Hosea was a man after your heart. But he said, no, no, I said it right, David. I said, David, you want, you want to know how God thinks? God don't really care. And no, Please don't misunderstand. Let me, let me, let me backtrack that. <coughs> God cares how many times you fall. But if you look at the lovingness and the heart of God, Look at David, a man who was a multiple adulterer, fornicator, because not only did he have wives, but he also had concubines or girlfriends or thoughts on the side. He was a murderer, not during wartime. It's not the people that he killed. It's not, he, he wasn't a murderer because he killed Goliath. That was sanctioned by God. He was a murderer because he took a woman's husband and had him killed so that he could cover up his affair with her. 
And how many people did he put in harm's way in order to be able to pull off this masterpiece of deception? So he's a murderer. He's an adulterer. He's a fornicator. And I mean a habitual adulterer, habitual fornicator, liar, all of these things. And this is the one that God says, <laughs> this is my road dog. This is my ace boom coon. We down like four flat tires, tight like nat booty. I know y'all ain't used to that. Anyway, but this is who God is saying David is to him. How can you be? Because David's heart, David's heart was repentant. As often as David sinned, he said, and, and think about this. Did you all know? This is something that I, I read but never really paid any attention to. But I heard my wife and I was watching TBN and, and one of the ministers said, this was David when he was, when, when God told him and when, when the prophet came to him and said, David, you have taken a man's wife and you have committed murder to cover it up. And God said this to him, you got 700 wives and 900 girlfriends and you have all of these other things and he said this is what God said and if that wasn't enough I would have given you more what you didn't have to go and take the man's wife you are already upside down in sin I had already given you the kingdoms. I, would, I still would have continued to bless you. I would have given you more kingdoms and, and more money and more houses and more land and more armies. And I would have given all of, I would have increased you if that wasn't enough. God loves his children. He says, no good thing without withhold. And if you, as sinful people, know how to give good things to your children, what do you think about me? So when we talk about God providing, now I'm talking to folks who are saying, hey, I got some financial issues. I got some situations. I got some problems. Do you not know Jehovah Jireh? What do you need? Do you not know the God who says, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory? Do you not know him? Brothers and sisters, right now, I know uh, we have, I'm making the announcement for the people, if that's okay with you. Uh, we, we make the announcement that uh, at 8.15, we normally do our offering period. So for those who are watching with us, uh, I think everybody already here have had the opportunity to give and, and, and bless this ministry. Uh, if you want to be a blessing, if you would like to partner with us, um, we, we certainly believe that Jerusalem is good ground. I'm hoping and praying that the word of God that you are receiving is good enough and, and that you recognize that this is the word of God. I'm not adding uh, my thoughts and opinions. Every time I say something, I do my best to give you scripture to back up. So this is good ground. This is good soil. <clears throat> I understand my, uh, my delivery might be different, but I want you all to understand that God has not changed. God has not changed. He is a God that doesn't change, but we're no longer wearing robes and sandals. We wear jeans and tennis shoes, and I don't know you know, a thousand years from now, if the Lord delay is coming, what are we going to be wearing then? I don't know. But God hasn't changed his message. He just changed his methods. Uh, God allows us to to use Facebook. Twenty years ago, we nobody was going live and, and broadcasting their ministry. Uh, we had to go to KRL and we took them a tape of our service each week and they would play the tape. And that's how we got on the radio. And now we do all of this and we don't have to pay for it. Um, but there's still a cost to doing ministry. So if you all would like to partner with us, you can view the cash app, dollar sign, New Jerusalem 1977. Is that right? Dollar sign, dollar sign, New Jerusalem 1977. You can access the Zale app. Uh, the Zale app, you can access it using the phone number 314-368-7378. And there are still people who use 
uh, checks, money orders, and uh, stamps. You can send uh, your love offering to New Jerusalem, number one, North Dade, Ferguson, Missouri, 63135. <coughs> um, brothers and sisters, again, go to uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I'm, I'm so sorry, man. You, you done had your hand up, and I done looked at you two times, and I'm like, I'm going to come back. I got to remember. Yes, ma'am. I'm so sorry. So do you think that uh, God put it in the well, I don't know if, if that's the right way, but um, he let us know all of David's sins and uh, what he done, the things that he forbid it. Do you think that he's letting us know that to say that regardless whether you do these things that he still love people? You know, regardless of what your sin is, he just wants you to do things differently. Because for David to do all of those things, the things that God forbid, and still be, you know, be the apple of God's eye, do you think that when reading that people ought to get from that? Even though you have done this, you fornicated, you lied, you stole people's husbands and wives, God will still forgive you. You may not be the apple of God, but be a forgiving God. I think what God wants us to take away from that is that God doesn't love us according to our acts. God loves us according to our heart. And if there are some people... You all, I was going to try to get to a particular passage, and we only got 14 minutes left. Um, I don't think that you can sin and not, as a Christian, feel remorse for the sin that we do. You all understand what I'm saying? If you are a Christian and you sin, I believe that you are going to feel remorseful. But there are some people who are dealing with some strongholds that, preacher, I really don't like what I'm doing. Let, let me give you a scenario. I knew a young man who was um, sexually molested early in life, was turned on. And brothers and sisters, when they talk about sexual addictions, it truly is addictive. That's why the Bible says flee fornication. That you all don't understand the spirits that you are dealing with. You you know people talk about you know this energy and that energy and it's it's not energy that we're dealing with. It's spirits. We are dealing with spiritual wickedness and demonic forces in high places. Uh, this world, the Bible says that Satan is the prince. He has dominion. Y'all don't understand that 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 he is a ro he's royalty in this world, and there are certain strongholds that people are dealing with, and there it's it's hard to break those strongholds. It can be, but some and 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 some some people are dealing like they or not David, excuse me, like Paul dealt. And Paul says, there is a stronghold. There is something that's been bothering me. There is this sin that I can't shake, and, and it bothers me so much. And I ask God to remove this sin from me, and God says, I'm not going to remove the sin because my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So then Paul says, well, now I, I'm not boasting in my sin, but I am boasting in my weakness because God is getting the glory. Some people are dealing with something so strong, so stronghold that, man, you all, I've never met a crackhead that wanted to be. They want to get off. And they say after each shot, snort, whatever, this is the last time and I'm done. But then it starts pulling on them. And they want out and they don't know how. Most people who are involved in, 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 in different types of sin activities, they want a way out. If <laughs> There are some drug dealers and, and pimps and prostitutes and all of that who, if they could get a corner office downtown in one of these high-rises, they would take it. 
but I know a lot of people who have felonies on their record and, and certain places won't give them the time of day because of what their record says. When we realize and we see, and I can't, man, I don't have the time to go into how many people have been wrongly incarcerated, how many people have been uh, 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 pulled into the prison system for 30 years, and here we are hearing again about another individual who's on death row, who they're trying to get the, the, the conviction stayed, who, who they're trying to get uh, exonerated because 30 years ago, the police pressured people into saying things that weren't true so that they could get a conviction. This ain't, we're not talking in the 1960s and 50s. We're talking in 1990, 2000, yesterday. There's a lot of people who went to prison who come out of prison and can't get a job, so they turn to a life of crime because that's the only place where they can make a living because so many people don't want to give them. And I'm telling you, but God says, I will allow you to be your own boss. I'm not giving anybody an excuse to sin because I know a lot of people who have come out of jail, who have started business, who, who are multimillionaires right now. But brothers and sisters, they are not the norm. Yes, ma'am. Paul said, when I desire to do good, evil is always present. She asked the question, well, when David done these things, is it allowed and God allowed us to see these things that are done and, and still uh, forgive us. Yes, he forgive us, but he gives us an opportunity to get it correct, to do it right, to ask him, He's like you said, the strongholds in our life. Those are strongholds, but we've got a God who's able to deliver. Paul was one who thought he was doing right, but when he began to seek God, when he when God put the blinders on him and he went and he began to, to ask and question God, he got answers. When you desire to do the right thing, and even though that thing is pulling at you, that's why the Bible says some of these things come but by fasting and praying. When you begin to set yourself aside and, and, and still away by yourself and set yourself apart from these people that are your friends and your loved ones that are doing these things, and you begin to ask God to work on you, to fix you, to make you think right, help me to walk right, help me to leave that thing alone. God will do that. Some of those things that don't happen like that. What I'm saying is that, listen, even though David done what he done, you done what you done, you done what you done, you done what you done, I've done what I'm done. We are still doing some things, saved, sanctified, and have the spirit of God living within us. But yet we are stumbling and falling. But we're seeking God to clean us up. And I want you to know that God can clean you. The Bible says, is there any that do as good as sin is not? The word said, no, not one. So how do, how do we deal with that? We go to God and we surrender. I don't mean that half step stuff. You know how we do it. I mean with a pure heart. That's what the pastor's telling us. God looks at our heart, the heart, and the heart is saying, I don't like this. This is wrong. God fix me. But you got to want to be fixed. You got to want to make a change. He's the one. I can't change your heart. I don't care how much I talk. I don't care how much he preach. I don't care how much he sing. I don't care how much he pray. I don't care how much he fast. You got to want it. When you want what God got for you, you want to live right. You can live right. Am I saying that you won't sin? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that God will come in and give you strength where you're weak. And like the pastor just said, when you decide to do those things, the Holy Spirit will start talking. Sharon, do you really want to do that? You need to think about that thing. There's consequences behind it. Because it don't happen right then and there. You think we done got away. Church, we ain't got away. We ain't got away. We're going to pay for it. That's why some of us are suffering through sickness and it's all kind of illnesses. Because of the things that we have done in life. And we got to pay for it on this end. We ain't going to heaven with that mess, with that sin. It's going to be paid for right here. So, Sister uh, Asia, I want you to know that God knows the heart. He allows these things in the Bible that he left for. There, 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 there are, they are for us to realize who God is and what he can do. And not only did David do it, not only did Paul do it and then Peter and all them, you, 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 me, all of us have done some stuff. We, we done done some stuff that we feel nobody knows about it. But God knows. Saved and sanctified. 
having the spirit of God living within us, and we still make mistakes. Get it corrected. Get it corrected. Get in your word. Know your word. Study your word. Seek God. I'm sorry. Pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless. I guess we need to take another offering for the speaker. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. Pastor, may I add just a little tidbit? Do you need to add anything else to that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to help you out. I want to help Sister Acher and all of us that's in here. God loves us. God hates sin. Learn to hate sin and love the individual. God loves us. He says sin stinks in his nostril, not man, but sin. Amen. That's how David could be the apple of God's eye because God loved David. He said, Jacob, I what? I love. Esau, I hate. Not that he hated the individual Esau, but sin that Esau represents. Thank you. Amen. So, and, 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 and you all, just to make sure we all understand, this is not directed at Sister Asia, like, you know, uh, uh, you know, I want to help Sister Ace out. Get into your word because you ain't in it. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're just saying, uh, again, to understand how God thinks and how he reacts to sin. Uh, we as sinners, God hates the sin, loves the sinner. Um, and we need to remember that when someone sins against us that we wrestle not still. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. We, we wrestle, let the spirit of God in you wrestle with the demonic spirit in somebody else. But let's love the person. Remember with love and kindness. I want you all to remember we want sinners at Jerusalem. I'm hoping that you won't continue to sin when you become a member or whatever. But the idea is that we don't want you uh, we want you to know that if you have a problem with sin, we want you here because that's how you get help. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to say thank you all. I want to say thank you to all of our visitors. God bless you all. I'm so, so appreciative of you all coming, for you being here and, and being a part of this service with us. Um, if this ministry is a blessing, tell somebody. Uh, if, if it's blessing you or you believe it will be a blessing to other people, let them know so, uh, so that we can try to spread this word, spread this gospel uh, to other folks. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. God keep you. We thank you so much. Uh, for those uh, who can hang out with us for a minute or two afterwards, uh, if y'all can help us to, to kind of get this place put back in order uh, so that uh, we don't have to come in extra, extra, extra early Sunday morning to, to reset the table and chairs. Let's go ahead and, and we'll cancel it. God bless you all. We'll see you next.